I don't know about you, but I struggle a bit with the way our world seems to want to treat gender roles. On the one hand, there is the assumption that dolls are for girls and bricks for boys, pink for girls, blue for boys, all those sorts of stereotypes. And they really wind me up. And no matter how much we claim uh, that these ideas are not part of our life anymore, they still are. They follow into adult life. We casually use policemen and firemen without really thinking about whether those coming to help us will be male or female. Women are still less likely to get high paying jobs or promotions than their male counterparts. It seems ridiculous to me that we still separate what boys will do and what girls will do, what men will be able to do and what women will be able to do in this way. But on the other side of the coin, there are some who were pushed to say that there are essentially no differences between men and women other than the purely physiological ones. And even that's open to debate. They argue that the only difference between us are the ones that we've learned. And I really struggle with these arguments, too. I think God has made men and women equal but different. I think that in a culture that's so caught up in identity, in who I am, we need to be able to better define what it means to be made in God's image, whatever gender we are. But gender identity is a huge topic and one I cannot possibly do justice to without doing a lot more reading. Uh, and today I wanted to talk specifically about what the New Testament says about the role of women in church life. It's easy to read 1 Timothy and assume that the role of women in church is that they should be seen and not heard, to follow where the men lead. But I don't think that's right. We talked a bit about this a few weeks ago. I talked about how the situation in Ephesus that Paul was writing into, that particular circumstance, made him write what he did. And that those instructions were not necessarily for every church for all time. Today I want us to think a step further. 1 Timothy 3.11 says, In the same way the women are to be worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. It says he's talking about the qualifications for leaders. That verse in itself could be a little controversial. It's not clear whether these were uh, women who were female leaders in their own right or whether they were the wives of the male leaders. But today what I want to remind you of is that all scripture is God breathed and this passage fits into a much wider picture. I want to remind you of Mary in June called a Apostles by Paul in Romans 16. Of Phoebe who in that same chapter is described as a deacon. I want to remind you of Lydia in Acts 16 who's one of the leaders of the Christian community in Thyatira. Of Chloe and Nympha for who in 1 Corinthians 11 and Colossians 4 are heads of churches who meet in their homes. I want to remind you of Mary Magdalene, the first person to proclaim the risen Christ. I want to remind you of Deborah, who led the nation of Israel in the time of the judges. Of Huldah, a prophet sent by God to King Josiah. Of Ruth and Esther and Tamar, all who used the position they found themselves in to lead, to guide, to care for God's people. Yes, there may not be as many female leaders in the Bible as male ones, but that says more about the society that they lived in than it does about God's plan. This Sunday just gone, I read these words from 1 Timothy 4. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. And we'll revisit those words as well next week. But today I say, do not let anyone look down on you because of your gender. God calls both women and men to lead, to preach, to teach. He calls both women and men to be prophets, to serve and to nurture. He calls both women and men to follow him. What matters here is not whether you are male or female. Jew, Gentile, slave or free. What matters is what God is calling you to do.